Thank you for joining. In this lesson, we will continue working on domain models and implement both the dbcontext and dbset classes, which are essential parts of entity framework. Since I explained the usage of dbcontext and dbset classes in the previous lessons, this lesson will focus on implementing the required logic in our project. We will use both classes to enable entity framework to create the database using the code-first approach and consume the domain model classes and their properties accordingly. I will create a data folder, which is a common practice and represents a connection to the database. This domain-based folder structure can contain additional subfolders. In the event that we use dbcontext files multiple times in a project to create different databases, the data folder would include subfolders corresponding to dbcontext files. However, since we have only one database, the data folder will remain standalone with the dbcontext file directly included. I'll name the file hikaitok and add the dbcontext suffix, which is a conventional naming practice. The class name is provided automatically, and we need to extend it with dbcontext class usage. If there is no pop-up with the quick action bulb, you can press Ctrl period to apply the namespace usage to the current file. The namespace that should appear is Microsoft Entity Framework. Next, let's add the dbset classes, which will represent our tables in the database. Planet, Solar System and Water, all of which we created in the previous lesson. The db content will encapsulate these three dbset properties and map them to tables in the database when we initiate migrations with Entity Framework. In case you have additional custom requirements for the database schema, you can add the onModelCreating method. This method is used when you want to customize the database schema or configure specific behaviors for your entities. For example, you can use it to specify table names, define relationships, set column data types, or apply unique constraints. Using toTable would change the table names that Entity Framework uses to interact with the existing tables. It won't create new tables, nor will it duplicate the existing ones. Additionally, you can remove the name of operator. This part of the code is just an example, and I will comment it out. In the next lesson, we will add a constructor to the current class, along with the connection string, and demonstrate various methods of using the connection string to connect to the SQL database. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or need further assistance, feel free to comment below. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel for more great coding content. Stay updated with the latest videos by ringing the notification bell. Happy coding!